Hello, this is Jerry with CADKitchenPlans.com here again in another installment of Kitchen and Bath 3D AutoCAD. If you watched previous videos, you saw me create this cabinet right here, which is a uh, basic face frame cabinet. It's 30 inches wide, standard base height at 34 and a half high and 24 inches deep. And then you also saw me create this piece right here, which is a spindle. And uh, I'm going to work with that a little bit more today going to turn this into a half spindle, modify the face frame of this cabinet, and apply the spindle. And if we have time, I might even do a little bit of work on this toe kick to dress that up a bit too. But what we have is really this spindle in two components. We have the base and upper section, and then we have the center section. This center section, if I highlight over it, you can see it comes up and tells me that it is actually a surface and not a solid. Without getting into too much detail beyond the scope of this little video, the long story short is that uh, I need to use some different methods to modify this uh, spindle than I might ordinarily use. So uh, an easy way to turn this into a half turning, which is what we want to do to apply it to the face frame of the cabinet, is to use a subtract command. And I'm going to start by picking a box, and it's going to ask me how wide. I know that the post is a 4 inch by 4 inch post, so I'm going to make this 5 inches wide. And I know it's 34 and a half high, so I'm going to say... 35 inches tall and I can pick any number for depth here so we'll just hit enter and what we end up with is now part of the post being uh, covered by uh, a portion of this cube that I just created and so now what I need to do is subtract these parts of the post uh, from the cube in order to split that in half so I'm going to grab the subtract command I'm going to subtract the upper and lower portions the center portion and then I'm going to subtract it from this item, and there we have our split post. You can see I've cut it right in half. Now, the next thing I need to do is modify this face frame to accept that post. I'm going to do that by using the Move Faces command. And what this is going to do is widen the face frame component to accept that spindle. So I've selected the faces I want to widen. I know I want to at uh, a four and a half inch post so I'm going to select and I already have an inch and a half face frame I'm going to select three and a half inches to widen that face frame on each side so now I have a five inch flat area with which to mount my four inch post on and again same thing over here move faces select that face select that face select a base point and then three and a half inches, and there you see it has widened that face frame for me. Now I also wanted to um, hopefully have some time to dress up this toe kick, so I'm going to draw this down all the way to the floor. I'm going to select Move Faces again, and I'm going to grab a base point, and pull it in this direction, and say four inches. So there is our completely modified face frame ready to accept this column, or half turning rather. So now that I've modified the face frame, all I need to do is move copies of this spindle over to the flat areas on the face frame. And I'm going to do that by uh, starting with the reference point. And I'll just, I know that my face frame is 5 inches wide, so I'm going to type in 2 and a half inches to the center of that face frame, and it gives me a line that you see right there. Then I'm going to add another line over here and do the same thing. Two and a half inches. So the end of these lines represents the center of that face frame. And now all I have to do is copy this half turning. And I want to grab it by the center. And I want to take it over here and drop it at the end of that line, which is right there. You can see it's dropped it right in the center of that for me. So now I just need to do that again. Copy selection. Make sure I grab this by the center. Bring it over. Find the end of the line that I just created. Which is right there. And now you can see I've placed those two half turnings. Directly in the center of those 
slide styles. Hey, look at that. I've got a half spindle floating out in space. Let's get rid of that. So now what I have is this situation here. I've applied my two columns and this cabinet's starting to look good. I'm just going to delete this copy and then I'm going to get to work on the toe kick area. So now that I have my spindles or half turnings mounted to the face frame of the cabinet, I think I want to go in and modify the toe kick area of the cabinet, dress that up a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is rather than reinvent the wheel, I'm going to go into an existing file and I'm going to pull out a bracket foot that I have saved uh, from another manufacturer, highlight it, I'm going to copy it and bring it right into the job. see it right here. I'm going to place this on a little bit different layer just to give it a little bit more contrast and make sure we can see it. Okay, so there's our bracket foot right there. And what I want to do is I want to carve out this toe area uh, in the profile of this bracket foot. Um, but this bracket foot is actually an outline of the existing part. That's not what I need. What I really need is this profile right in here so that I can extrude that in the form of a 3D solid and then punch it out of the, uh, the solid portion of the toe kick. So I'm going to delete that portion of it. And I'm going to be working with just this part of it right here. And what I want to do is I want to mirror that Right along that point there. And now here's our here's our other half of the bracket. Slide it out here a little bit. So now all I need to do is determine exactly how wide I want to make that cutout. Well actually there is one other thing I want to do here. That is to top on our bracket. So it's going to do that. Again, all these lines have to meet and touch, otherwise it's not going to let me do what I need to do. So starting to look like this. and. I don't even know what this dimension is. Let's go in here and see what we've got. So this is 19 inches. I think I'm going to shorten it up just to drop. Because I know I've got 21 between my posts. I'm just going to bring it here there. Again, you will have specific dimensions probably that you're working with. I'm not so concerned with those right now because I'm just trying to show you how this is done. Now I'm going to add a line across the base there. And I need to join all these up as one line to work with them. So I'll use a p-edit command. And I want to join to that. Join those. Now we have, you can see, one line. So now all I need to do is come over here. I'm going to find the center of our toe kick, which is right there. Draw a line down to the bottom, right there. And then I'm going to take this part that I just created, or actually it's just a line at this point, grab it at the center it over here, drop it right there, and now I want to extrude this part. Grab it here, extrude, I'm going to pull it back through that face frame, just like that, and then I'm going to subtract. I'm going to subtract from the face frame this part, hit enter, and now you can see I've sculpted that toe kick. 
let's take a look at how that, that looks in 3D. That looks pretty good. You can see I've dressed this cabinet up quite a bit, pretty simply. And uh, looks like I need to make my back toe kick a little bit higher. Yeah. Let's see right there, I've got a little, little air between the uh, toe kick and the uh, bottom of the cabinet, but that's easily fixed. Uh, so this is what we look like right now. I think in the next video I'm going to follow up and show you how to do some doors and drawers and maybe some other modifications. Uh, the site is cadkitchenplans.com again. My name is Jerry. Please feel free to visit. Thanks again for watching and take care.